Back to the daily grind, the channel's getting false flagged by triggered trolls, so make sure you subscribe to the new channel. Let's get to the MMA news. Oh shit, get your popcorn back out. Get your popcorn back out, guys. I thought you could put your popcorn up. I thought the beef was squashed. No! <laughs> oh my god, let's fucking go. Get your fucking popcorn back out. The movie's getting started. Oh shit. Tyron Woodley said he's ready to wage war if the UFC introduces an interim title. Ooh, <laughs> motherfucker, pop. Where's Kobe? Kobe, did somebody get Kobe? <laughs> Somebody get Kobe Covington, please. He's gonna we're gonna Dana White, you're gonna need Kobe Covington on your side for this one because Tyron Woodley, he's fucking getting his troops ready, he's getting his soldiers ready, he's getting his ducks in order, and he's ready for war. He said, listen to what Tyron Woodley had to say. He said, well, I think it was probably on his podcast, because I didn't see this anywhere. Thanks to Barry Walters for requesting this, by the way. It's on MMAmania.com. Alright, this is what Tyron Woodley had to say. If the UFC brings an interim belt, they better be ready to wage war. Because I'm going to be the most livid, most vocal. If they think I speak out now, I mean, I fought in four world title fights in less than a year. I've out brawled the brawler. Steven Thompson was not able to look as magnificent against me as he looked against everybody else. And I completely schooled Damian Maya. I fought four times in 12 months. And I was prepared to fight five times in 18 months if I had been able to fight in November. Okay, let's break this down because there's two paragraphs. Excuse, excuse me. Alright, so in this first paragraph, he said... This, there's a couple things I disagree with, but at the same time, he makes some really good points. He said, I out brawled the brawler. Right? He's talking about Robbie Lawler. You didn't really out brawl Robbie because you guys didn't get into a brawl is what I'll say. You did knock him out and smoke him. You, I, I mean, you knocked him out. But you didn't really brawl him. So you beat the brawler. Steven Thompson wasn't able to look as magnificent against everyone else. That's true, but that's it. Wasn't you? You weren't looking too magnificent in there against t Stephen Thompson either. So that's fine. You are correct when you say he didn't look magnificent against you. But at the same time, the second fight was kind of forgettable. First fight, I'm fine with. I loved it. All right. Then he said, "I completely schooled Damian Maya." Back, 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 back. Notice he said schooled. He said he's completely schooled Damian Maya, which is true. Also, some sort. I mean, if you're on Tyron Woodley's side, if you're a Tyron Woodley fanboy, you could just say, yes, all of this is true. But when you say you completely schooled Damian Maya, I mean, if we were in takedown defense school, not in fighting school, it's not like you just went in there and whooped his ass. Like, what was the fight we were just watching? Who was it? Sam, it wasn't, it was on the, it was on the uh, Pettis Moreno card. It was either Sam Alvey, Rashad Evans fight. There was a fight where somebody was just trying to grapple and the other guy was pushing forward, but he was actually doing strikes. I don't think it was the Alvy Evans. We're going to skip that for now. We're not going to talk about that because I can't remember the exact fight. But I'll say he said he completely schooled Damian Maya. Yeah, you completely schooled him as far as takedowns go. But as far as doing damage to him, you did more damage to Wonder Boy in probably both fights than you did to Damian Maya. I mean, you caught him with that big uppercut in the first and hurt his eye. But as far as uh, almost finishing Damian Maya, there wasn't really, I mean... I don't think he ever really almost finished Damian Maya. I mean, I'm trying to remember the fight off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure he didn't come close to finishing Damian Maya in either fight. So, he schooled Damian Maya as far as takedown defense goes, but it's not like he just schooled him in jujitsu and everything. So, he said, I fought four. Now, this is the part I actually agree with and I'm, I actually fucking love. I fought four times in 12 months, and I was prepared to fight five and 18. We're not going to talk about that. Four times in 12 months is actually active, very active. A active fighter fights three times a year. A very active fighter fights four times a year. So even though it wasn't in the same calendar year, he did fight four times in 12 months, and he's the champion. That says a lot. Normally, it's guys trying to get the belt, guys climbing like Donald Cerrone that fight four times a year. It's not the champion. When's the last time you've seen a champion defend his belt and win the belt four times in 12 months? I can't think of one off the top of my head. You think of, let's go down to Stipe. He fights usually twice a year, probably. Go down to John Jones, Daniel Cormier, twice a year, most likely. Sometimes once, depending on injuries, missing weight, all type of stuff. Uh, let's go down, middleweight. Bisping, he's been injured. He hasn't been nearly as active as Tyron Woodley. Tyron Woodley, very active so he's the most he's the heaviest active champion 
Let's go down to 155, Conor McGregor, not very active as a champion. Let's go to Max Holloway, hasn't been active yet as a champion. He's an active fighter, though, but right now he's already in contract negotiations, not as active. Let's go to 135, Cody Garbrandt, hasn't defended either, not as active. 125, Demetrius Johnson. Now, he's active, but, I mean, that's Demetrius Johnson. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> I'll just play. I'll just say, you see what I'm saying? I mean, uh, he, I mean, you see what I'm saying? When you become the champion, a lot of people start posturing. Oh, well, you know, they, somehow they randomly get injured, and it just allows them to keep the belt an extra 12 months. Then they probably would have had it. As soon as they win the belt, or shortly after they win the belt, it's injury time. Before they ever have to fight a real contender, something happens to where they don't have to do it. They try and hold on the, to the belt as long as possible. I'll go into a couple um, examples right here. Cody Garbrandt, he fought Dominic Cruz, won the belt, but Dominic, he called out Dominic Cruz for the rematch. Dominic Cruz didn't want it, but now look, he hasn't fought anybody. He hasn't fought any contenders. He won. So, you can't say he's active. So, when you go to talk about stagnant champions and stripping people of belts... Cody Garbrandt. Now let's go up to a weight class to Conor McGregor. He's never defended a belt. Lightweight. It's been about a year since he won his belt. They're not talking about stripping him of a belt. or I mean, they're not talking about stripping Woodley, but they're not. Um, he hasn't been as active. They are talking about introducing an interim. But honestly, let's be honest. The UFC hasn't even came out and said they're going to make Robbie versus Jorge for the interim title. Somebody, it's been reported, it's been rumored, and it makes sense, so a lot of us are fine with it, and we've been talking about it, but the UFC hasn't actually said interim for Jorge Robbie, although someone from the camps has confirmed they were both introduced with, intru they were offered the interim title fight, that was actually reported, that wasn't a rumor, that was someone from both camps reporting the fact that they were offered an interim title fight, so... We'll see here. Let's get into his other paragraph because I feel like, I, I mean, he, that's the really the main point there that I had to stress. Uh, he fought four times in 12 months as a fucking champion. Championship fights. Robbie Lawler, Stephen Thompson, Stephen Thompson, Maya. That's all champion fights in fucking a 12-month a span. That's huge. That's fucking, as a UFC, as a fight fan, you should love that stat. The champion is defending his belt often. You should love that stat. Whether or not... What would you rather have, your champion fight one time a year and it's entertaining, or your champion defend his belt four times a year, no matter how the fight goes, and, and whether it goes like the Robbie Lawler fight where he knocks him out, or it goes like the Damian Maya fight where he just completely shuts out that guy's offense. Would you rather your champion defend his belt four times and you not enjoy two of the fights, or only defend it one time and not and, and enjoy that fight enjoy one only fight i i'm leaning i'm leaning toward the side of tyron willie there i would rather see the champion fight four times in 12 months every time and just keep this motherfucking these divisions rolling you want to know what division's not stagnant welterweight you want to know what division every other division the problem is there's too many contenders because the champion's not active so the contenders can't fight so they're just sitting there waiting for their fight in welterweight there's no contender. There's no clear number one contender. There's nobody that is waiting for their shot. There's nobody that's earned their shot and they're not getting it because some crazy shit's going on. As, as, as you can say about TJ Dillashaw, he earned his shot multiple times. He's not getting it because of politics. You can say that about Tony Ferguson, could be even American Madoff. He's not getting his shot because of politics. You can say that about these other divisions. But you can't say that about there's not one person, not one. Not one person in welterweight that is getting skipped, that is not getting shot, that hasn't been given an opportunity. There's not one fucking person waiting on Tyron. So, put some fucking respect on his name there. Now, you might not like the complaining and shit, and I don't either. When I first read this shit, I was like, man, come on, Tyron, chill. But when you read that fucking, he, he, he ha always has those facts, man. Now, some of them are facts, some of them are opinions. That's when the lines get blurred. When you come out with your opinion and you contradict yourself, that's when you start looking like a complainer. But when you come, see, like this one, he, see, he led up with uh, he led up with opinions to his fact. He said Stephen Thompson was not able to look as magnificent as he looked against everybody else. He didn't look that magnificent against everybody else. Some people, yes. But, I mean, even in some of Stephen Thompson's fights, he wasn't looking magnificent. The other guys got frustrated, came forward, and he clipped them up. But Stephen Thompson himself wasn't the one looking magnificent, as Tyron Woodley's saying. That's an opinion. 
So he said he completely schooled Damian Maya. That's an opinion. Some people don't think you completely schooled Damian Maya. All you did was you completely schooled him in takedown defense. No one's going to argue that. But as an overall MMA fight, you can even talk to Dana White. He wasn't impressed. If he thought you completely schooled Damian Maya, he might have been a little more impressed. If he thought, you know, and, and going into the fight, he said, Damian Maya is a jiu-jitsu specialist. I'm an MMA specialist. And Ariel, Ariel Helwani was asking someone after the fight, I believe, Damian Maya. How do you feel the fact Tyron said he's an MMA specialist, yet he didn't want to engage with you on the ground? So, Ariel Helwani put that question out there. What do you complete, if you completely schooled him, you would have followed him to the ground, not scared of his jiu-jitsu, finished him, ground him, pound, do whatever you needed to do, let him back up if you want to. If you completely schooled someone, you're toying with him. Like, um... I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to think of it. You see what I'm saying? So let's get to Tyron Woodley's next paragraph. I don't even think the word interim should be fixed in the UFC's mouth. Not only because how active I've been, Conor McGregor hasn't even spoken about defending his belt. Yes, he has. All that said, and there's still no clear contender. No matter what's going on with me, the deck needs to be shuffled a little more anyway. You've got Kelvin talking about coming down. You've got Masvidal. You've got Wonderboy. You've got Robbie Lawler. All these guys need to fight each other and see who the clear contender is. In the meantime, I'll be watching as I heal up and ready to take on the next challenger. Okay, let's fucking get it, man. I'm, I'm fine with that shit, with Tyron saying right here. I mean, I, you, like I said, you can disagree with the opinions. Or um, He actually said Conor McGregor hasn't even spoken about defending his belt. I mean, see, that's that's arguable because he said I, I'll fight the winner of you know I, I I suppose I'll fight the winner of Khabib Ferguson or he said I, I you know I suppose me and Nate will fight again at 155 for the belt. He has technically spoken about it. So when you say he hasn't spoken about defending his belt, you know there's going to be a bunch of those motherfucking Connor fans, the people that are not objective, the people that don't want to hear anything but Connor bless. They're going to come out here and say, No, Tyron Willie, you're fucking lying. He said, I'm fighting Nate. I'm fighting anybody in the world. Connor's the man. You're going to get that. You have to be really careful when you talk about Connor McGregor. You have to be really objective or you're going to just get 13, 13, 13. What the fuck you time at? I'm going to be the next. I'm going to be the one in the comments with them. 13, 13. I'm fucking riding with Connor. But you got to be fucking. Just because I'm riding with Connor don't mean I'm not objective and I'm unbiased. It's the truth. Like I said in that Polly McNoogles video, Conor McGregor don't have the best cardio. <laughs> but that doesn't mean he's not the motherfucking champ champ. Like Tyron Woodley says, you know, he's defended his belt four times. Four, 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 he's fought four times championship fights in 12 months. You can't name one other fucking champion on the roster that's done that recently. Besides Demetrius Johnson. What champion has fought four times in 12 months? I'm going to leave with that right there. Because I know Tyron Willie's going to get some hate. And I know there's going to be some smoke coming out after this. I'm glad the, I'm glad this shit came out because we got to fucking cook some more popcorn. Because we thought our popcorn was getting stale. But we got to make some new popcorn. Because now we got to expect Kobe Covington. Now we got to expect Dana White. Now there's all type of shit that can happen. Because we thought it was squashed. But Tyron Woodley said he's ready to wage war. If they say anything about a welterweight interim title. And I was fine with the interim title. But now when Tyron puts it like this. I kind of understand what he's saying. I'm the most active champion in the motherfucking organization. And you're going to give half of my belt to somebody else. You're going to give somebody else a piece of my belt because I'm injured. Okay. I understand why I can be a little pissed. But at the same time, put your head down. Get work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At the same time, you've said what you needed to say. Now it's time to stop talking about it and to be about it. This is all we need to hear until you have a reason to respond. You don't got to reiterate this point. You ain't got to go on the MMA hour, MMA junk. You don't have to go on a bunch of websites and repeat this exact point. This point's out there. Dana White, Kobe Covington, <laughs> all these people are going to hear this. And once they respond, then I'll be fine with Tyron Willie's response. But you just can't have too much fucking it's too much complaining in one day before you get overloaded now when you throw some hard facts in like i fought four times in 12 months and i was prepared to fight five and 18 if i didn't get injured that's fucking hardcore facts that the biggest tyron woodley fucking hater i want the biggest tyron woodley hater 
to motherfucking tell me what you think about him fighting four times in 12 months championship fights compared to your favorite champion. Because with that being said, I already told y'all, y'all know Tyron Willie's one of my favorite fighters. I'm just not with all the complaining, but he makes good fucking points. Part of the reason he's my favorite fighter. But Kobe Covington, he's, he's in the bushes. He's waiting. He's waiting for Tyron to slip up. He's waiting for Tyron to take it too far because he's got some dirt that'll ruin Tyron Willie's whole life and he's just waiting to whisper in Dana White's ear like, hey, boss. Hey, boss. Tyron Willie's been out here banging stripper bitches. <laughs> I'm just fucking around. I don't know what it is. Hey, boss. Allegedly. Hey, boss. Tyron Willie's been out here banging that one chick. You know that one chick that. I'm just saying. Kobe Covington's got some. Hey, boss. Hey, boss. Tyron Woodley's been out here eating that Frank Mir horse meat. Hey, boss. Hey, boss. Me and Tyron Woodley. Me and Tyron Woodley got this thing. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, I got pictures. All right, all right, all right. You guys see what I'm saying? Kobe Covington. He's got some fucking shit to leak, so get your popcorn out and be ready for Kobe Covington and Dana White to come back with some motherfucking heat because they ain't going to be too happy. Tyron Woodley's ready to wage war. You think they're backing down? Do you think El Jefe's backing down? Fuck no. Hit subscribe on this channel. Hit subscribe on the new channel. If this bitch motherfucker makes it past the week, past the appeal process, I'm going fucking ham. You know what it is. Let the internet know what the fuck you tell me in the comments. And for now, all you new people finding the channel, all you new hitters, this ain't motherfucking that old MMA quick turd. No. This is the motherfucking hashtag and new, hashtag and steal, hashtag fuck Oscar, hashtag fuck Tony P, hashtag fuck, hashtag day one hitters on deck, hashtag hitter army on deck, hashtag what the fuck you tap mad, dude. It is what it is. I'm out. Don't be racist. Be like Mario. He's an Italian plumber who was made by the Japanese, speaks English, looks like a Mexican, jumps like a black man, and grabs coins like a Jew. <laughs>